occasionally tech issues happen. Um, right now, I'm I'm learning campaign campaign cartographer three, oh, which yeah. is CAD software, so it's built funky, and I'm getting used to it. Um, yeah, I've seen that one. Um, it is it is worth. Uh, it is it is an expensive piece of software. Yeah, map piece of software, but it makes overall maps, galaxy maps, character portraits, isometric maps. That one's a huge time saver for me. I'm a huge fan of isometric maps. And not having to draw them out by hand on that squirrely paper that costs you a fortune is yes. awesome. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that one, I bought that one because players, there's the other thing. If your players are spending, giving you money, you provide the thing they want. My, yeah. A lot of my players want maps. The only maps I ever make are, are like relationship maps. How this shopkeep connects to that thief. That's it. Um, but if they want maps of the town, well, they paid me. I guess I'm making one. <laughs> so right. I, I bought campaign cartographer. Oh, that's funny. All right, cool. Yeah, tooling is a little rough in my experience because every there's like uh, so many different parts you have to like bring together, mm. and there's not like a single solution for doing all this stuff as a DM. It's like, oh, I got to use this software for this, that software for this. See, that's software why I like this, CC3. that software. It does everything. Yeah. Uh, it does, you know, dungeon maps, galaxy maps, character portraits, which isn't even a map at all. Mm. Uh, you name it, it can make it. If nice. it's remotely mappy, it can make it. Nice. Like, we're, like uh, dungeon, uh, what, I'm going to name that wrong. Uh, Wonder Draft uh, is really cool stuff. Mm. But Wonder Draft only does like world maps. And Dungeon yeah. Draft is the same company's program, but it only does dungeons. Yes. He, he, he does all of that. I'm not getting paid to say that or anything. It's just a really great piece of software. Well, I saw two there's big, two, two big one shiny. I, Go ahead. There's one I think called Dungeon Fog, which you can import the map Dungeon into Fog's Foundry. Cool. And Dungeon it will pretty cool. detect the walls and lights and bring them in there for you so you don't have to draw any lines. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Two big wrinkles for CCC that I should point out, but since I keep talking about how good it is, I should point out two what I consider to be major flaws. Yeah. Uh, well, one's not a flaw so much as a de design aspect that I don't love. It's CAD software, mm. uh, so it's clunky. To, it's it's different. So yes. in, traditionally in Photoshop or something like that, you click the you click the thing you want to do, and then the function. You click the polygon and then hit delete. In in um, CAD CC, it's the other way around. You click delete, and then you click all of the things you want to delete, and then you hit delete, and they all go gone. With a little bit of practice, that's actually faster. But, yes. but opening up, because there's less total clicks, but opening up, it's a lot slower. Yes. And it, while it has been updated since, like, DOS, when it first got made, it's, it, 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 you can tell it's old. It's, yeah. it's a funky piece of software, for sure. But once you get the hang of it, it's, it's brilliant. Cool. All right, so next question. What are some <laughs> big aha moments for you? Any mistakes you learned a lot from and might spare aspiring pros for making hmm. oh uh so so years ago uh years and years ago it was one of my first tables i ever hosted i think i was nine uh my my friend lucas we were playing dnd like big, hmm. you know magic is everywhere we're nine we hadn't really considered world building right magic is everywhere yeah uh, and lucas says hey i have magic powers and i said uh-huh and he went but all these spell descriptions are specific. I said, yeah, like fireball does this much damage and applies this far. And L uh, acid arrow does this much damage and travels this far. And I said, yeah. And he goes, can I use magic? If I, I mean, I'm a person. I, you know, and we were talking about cartoons, right? There's Power Rangers and DBZ and that kind of thing. And he goes, Goku can always just dig a little deeper. Can I dig a little deeper and do a cool magic thing? I went, yeah, I don't see why not. And he said, I, 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 he wanted to use magic to turn all of the goblins to turn all the goblins in the world into bunny rabbits. I hadn't really considered how many goblins that is, <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, you bet." Um, and and I said, "You know, roll for it." And he did, because at the time I didn't use assumed competency. So you had to roll for everything, and I would have had him roll for that one today anyway, because that's a big world changer. But he passed, um, so we turned all the goblins in the world into bunny rabbits. And then I thought about it, and I thought about it, and a couple of weeks later, many, 
many bunny rabbits descended from underground caverns to tear the city apart in search of more food because the ecosystem was not designed to contain that many rabbits. <laughs> and Lucas initially went, you son of a, oh, that's awesome. And we had a great story to go with it, which is to say, don't be afraid to throw your rule book in the trash can because D&D will not let you do that. Let you do that. It will not let you do that. There is not a spell for that. Wish, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe. But the yeah. stories we got out of that one stupid spell were great. Uh, there seems to be this belief that Wizards of the Coast play tests their work into the ground. That's that's clearly not true. Like, like look at the books, talk to Jeremy Crawford. Like that is that is not true. When he uses phrases like, "This spell seems to have see, exceeded our expectations," you mean you didn't see all the bell, the, all the angles? Because yeah, you, the rest of, us. Cool. of course. Well, I mean, you know, they tested like I used to play Magic the Gathering a lot mm -hmm. years ago. Oh yeah. And, they, it's hard to think of every combination, especially Magic the Gathering has been mm. around for like 25 years or something like oh that. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it may not be broken in one format, but as soon but as it, it might be another, another format, yeah, it's very broken. Uh, so I, I think if there's one thing I could, I could instill in people, the books do not know better than you do. I have yep. never, yeah, I have never in 20 years had a really great story be born from We Follow the Rules. Yeah, we had really great stories that existed in spite of the rules, but never because of them. Yes, ever. Well, the rules uh, are a framework to help right. you, and you can totally story. break them because it's yes. not—it's not a game in the usual sense of winners and losers. Yes, if we're playing chess, and you take two turns. You're absolutely cheating, and that wasn't okay. And I'm going to be unhappy. Yeah, if because there's we knew who was what it was going to take to win the game of chess. Yes. We knew what the win-loss condition was before we took the pieces out of the box. D&D, &D, that's not true. There yep. is no predefined win-loss condition. Yep. So you can't really cheat. Yes. So go out and do whatever the hell you want to do. The system will make space, I promise. Yep. Cool. Um, next question. What kind of tips do you have for those that are getting started? Mm. Mm. Well, if, if you're brand new, and you're concerned that you're not any good, that you're not Chris Perkins or Matthew Mercer or, I don't know, Matthew Colville or me. Well, I think we're referring to getting started paid DMing as opposed to oh, getting started as a DM. Because right. I assume um, most people, I think, getting into paid DMing, are probably based on who we've right? seen in the group, most, not everybody in the group has a lot of experience, but a lot, I'd say at least like 60 to 70% have literally been paying, playing since the 90s from what I've seen. Right, right. So... And, Pick, go to, let's see, go to where the people are and set a price point. Um, mm. So I figured out what my price point was, not based upon the market, but based upon how much money I wanted to make a month and how many hours I was willing to spend doing it. That's yes. I don't um, think there is a real market currently because first of all, you're in, everybody's in their own city. Uh, right, right. That's going to affect the going rate. Like I, if you live in San Francisco, you can charge more than somebody who lives in Idaho. Yeah, like, Devin makes substantial. Wow, does he make more money than I do? Holy crap! Yes, but uh, in San Francisco, oh, uh, his uh, uh, one-bedroom uh, apartment is like thirty-five hundred a month, right? Yeah, which is insane. <laughs> yes, so uh, it's a different market. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, absolutely... if you make a hundred k in San Francisco, you're barely scraping by. Yeah, if I make a hundred k here, we're going to do quite well. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of money where I live. So, uh, so it's so, just, there's a lot of factors. You can't just, you know, yeah. if you're going to go on roll 20 or, or boundary or any old forum site, I mean, they're looking for group sites yeah. all over the planet. Oh my God. There are so many, there are so yeah. many just on Facebook. There were just so many subgroups for that. Yes. Um, I two two things. I, well, I always say two, but I always end up with more than that. Start with, start with what your price point is. Um, and be relatively firm about that. If your players yep. say, Hey, look, I don't want to pay that much. Yeah. And they offer up another price point and it sounds acceptable. Go for it. Yeah. As soon as you say, why, well, what would you be willing to pay? Now they own you, not the other way around. Yeah. Do I, um, as so a former uh, company owner for web development, you know, small business type thing. Mm -hmm. That's totally true. Like you got to, um, you got to, you got to be conf First of all, you got to be confident you can right. deliver at that price point, and then you say that's my price point. And some people won't come, and that's fine, but others will. will. 
Right. Yeah. And and there that was uh, confident at that price point. I was going to go there next. You, yes. Why?